In this video, we're going to dive into the differences between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. We'll walk through the pathophysiology and the symptoms for them so that you can understand them and pass your nursing school exams. Let's dive in. To understand the difference between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, we will need to have a solid understanding of what is happening inside the body with each of these, aka the pathophysiology. You know, I always love to break down pathophysiology and these tough concepts into simple step-by-step -step processes for you to follow. This is exactly how we teach inside the Nursing SOS membership community so that you can learn things faster and easier. So if you are struggling in nursing school right now and you want an easier way to learn everything, don't miss out on joining the Nursing SOS membership community the next time enrollment is open. It's going to be so, so helpful for you. Now let's start with osteoarthritis pathophysiology. Very simply, osteoarthritis is degeneration of the joints when the articular cartilage or that slippery cartilage that allows frictionless rubbing of bones when that's worn away. Without this protective layer of cartilage, eventually bone on bone rubbing can happen. And as you can imagine, that is very painful. So let's put this process into a simple step-by-step -step breakdown of the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis to give you a clearer picture of what's actually going on here so you can learn it easier. So in step number one of the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis, there is degeneration of that articular cartilage inside the joint cavity. This most often happens on the joints that are weight-bearing, like the knees, the hips, the lower back, and even the hands. So that articular cartilage gets worn away and as it wears away, that bone-on-bone -bone rubbing can happen because there's no protective layer between those two bones in the joints anymore. Now, this is step number two of the pathophysiology. The bones can rub together. This bone-on-bone -bone rubbing can, over time, lead to bone breakdown because the bones are not protected in those joints, and instead, they're just rubbing against each other. This then leads to step number three. Bone breakdown occurs as well as the formation of new bony growths called osteophytosis because this bone on bone rubbing is happening. Now, an important thing to know about osteoarthritis is that it is not an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis is. The immune system isn't attacking the joints. The cartilage in the joints are just breaking down over time. The cause of our osteoarthritis it's not exactly known, but obesity, overuse of joints, trauma, aging, smoking, and genetics may also play a role. So that is what is happening inside the body with osteoarthritis. Now let's dive into rheumatoid arthritis so we can have a clear understanding of both of them, can tell the similarities and the differences. So to start, the key point to remember with rheumatoid arthritis is that it is an autoimmune, systemic, inflammatory disorder that causes inflammation of the synovial lining of joints. The synovial lining is the connective tissue that lines the inside of the joint. Now the key here being that it is an autoimmune and a systemic inflammatory disorder. RA is an autoimmune disease where the body is attacking that joint lining, which then causes inflammation. So let's put this into a simple step-by-step -step process for you to follow just like we always do, just like we did with osteoarthritis, so that you can understand really what's happening here with rheumatoid arthritis. So step number Number one of the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis is that there is a trigger that causes inflammation. Now, it's not fully understood why this initial inflammatory response occurs, but it is thought to be a combination of environmental and biological or genetic factors. And then step number two is that over time, that inflammation causes tissue destruction, edema, and the development of spongy feeling tissue on the joint, which is called panis. Now, this leads to step number three, where the extra tissue growth at panis can cause pain pain and damage to the joints and that surrounding cartilage, which will then decrease mobility and function of that affected joint. And now step number four is the possible complications of RA, namely rheumatoid vasculitis and ankylosis. Rheumatoid vasculitis can happen in patients who have had RA for a long time, and it occurs when the blood vessels become inflamed too, not just the joints. And then over time, that panis, that extra growth tissue, in the joints can start to invade the surrounding tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, and the bone causing ankylosis, 
where the bones actually fuse together and it causes stiffening and immobility. So see the differences here with osteoarthritis? The inflammation happens over time due to use, whereas rheumatoid arthritis, it is a systemic inflammatory autoimmune disorder that destroys the tissue, causing edema and the development of that pannus, then decreasing mobility and function of the joint. These differences in what is happening inside the body, the pathophysiology for each disorder will help determine what symptoms fit each disorder. So let's jump back to rheumatoid arthritis. We know that the inflammatory process starts out with the synovial lining leading to the formation of a pannus and then for some eventually ankylosis. Now we can assume that the symptoms will revolve around this inflammatory process that is occurring, that pathophysiology. So let's go through some of the symptoms of RA. The biggest symptom of rheumatoid arthritis is pain and decreased range of motion in the affected joints. And here's one of the defining characteristics of rheumatoid arthritis. It affects the same joint bilaterally on both sides and more commonly affects the hands, the fingers, and the wrists. These are the most common, but it can affect the upper and the lower extremities as well as the neck and the shoulders as well. Unlike more typical arthritis with RA, it can happen at any age, but the likelihood increases with age. Now the development of RA is not based on use of the joint like OA is or osteoarthritis, but rather the inflammatory process that is happening inside the body despite the use or lack of use of that joint. The joints that are affected are usually warm, uh, they have edema, swelling, and are often very stiff in the mornings especially. Morning stiffness is also seen in osteoarthritis, but the biggest difference is that in the case of osteoarthritis, the stiffness resolves fairly quickly with joint movement, but with rheumatoid arthritis, it is likely to last longer. Symptoms of RA are usually more severe than with osteoarthritis as well. In addition, the patient may experience periods of remission with periods of flare-ups, and it may progress to symptoms that do not go back into remission, but are constant. RA is not only limited to the joints, but it can cause cardiac and respiratory symptoms as well, since this is a systemic inflammatory condition. It is thought that that inflammatory response impairs the body's ability to produce red blood cells in the bone marrow, while also limited the body's ability to use iron, so anemia is common in patients with RA, with rheumatoid arthritis. So those are the main symptoms that you will see with rheumatoid arthritis. Now remember, since it is a systemic inflammatory response, so those symptoms can happen to any joint in the body. Now back to osteoarthritis. We know that osteoarthritis is joint degeneration over time because of that loss of the articular cartilage. We know that the symptoms will have to do with that degeneration, that pathophysiology, right? So keep that bone degeneration in mind as we go through these signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis. Now the hallmark symptom of OA are joint pain, stiffness, and restriction of movement. This is all due to that deterioration of the cartilage causing bone on bone rubbing, which is very painful. And over time, it causes stiffness in those joints. Now the stiffness can be noticed in the morning, it gets better with some movement, but then Throughout the day, the pain increases from that joint use again. It usually affects weight-bearing joints like the knee, the hip joints, and spine because again, this happens over time with use. It also affects the middle joints of the fingers and toes and those bony deformities, those osteophytes, they're usually more apparent in those joints. Now with OA, you will not see inflammation of the tissue surrounding the bone when you assess your patient. Just those bony growth that make the joint or the bone look abnormally large and feel hard. These osteophytes can also be tender to the touch, but they're not usually reddened or warm. Osteoarthritis is a joint problem, not a systemic inflammatory problem like rheumatoid arthritis is. It can be bilateral, but it's usually not symmetrical unless the movement is symmetrical. So it could be in both hips or both knees because the movement of the hips and the knees are usually symmetrical in the body. Whereas it may only be in one hand that is used more often. Now this is different from rheumatoid arthritis where the inflammation usually happens on both sides of the body. Now one of the best things that you can do to study in nursing school and learn things faster is to make concept maps. And in this video,
video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do that so that you can be more prepared for your exams and pass. And if you're a Nursing SOS member, be sure to download the med surge study guides that we have for you inside the community. And if you love this video, write love in the comments below and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll see you over there in that next video.